Good morning and welcome to Pike Creek Farm. My name is Renee and if this is your first time here, thank you so much for stopping. I wasn't going to videotape today what I was um, doing, but I went to a local uh, Mennonite store this yesterday and they had stalks of Brussels sprouts. So I grabbed three stalks of Brussels sprout, Brussels sprouts. <laughs> and I am going to pickle them. But I was inspired by that 1870s homestead and I am going to substitute the vinegars. I'm going to use still, they're going to be 6% acidity, so even higher. I am going to use balsamic vinegar and white wine vinegar instead of the regular vinegar and I'm going to use maple syrup instead of the sugar. I'm going to add a little bit of lemon juice for the brightness the original recipe from the ball book of canning uses um, lemon slices. I don't want lemon slices. I am going to add some garlic and it has water and black peppercorns. So I'm kind of just twisting their recipe. This is the way of getting Brussels sprouts shelf stable for the middle of winter. So come along. I'm going to get an apron on. I've already washed the Brussels sprouts, taken them off the stalks. I'll put a picture up here of what they look like. And I am now starting to put them in the pint jars. And I'm not parboiling because I want them to stay pretty crisp. I'm going to add some pickle crisp to them and I'll take you along. It's going to be a pretty quick process. They get water bath or steam can for 10 minutes. So actually the washing and taking them off the stem and trimming them was the biggest process. Okay, I'm ready to fill the jars with the Brussels sprouts. I want to know how much brine to make and how many I'm going to get. Um, so I started with the one. We need a half inch head space. I'm going to put a garlic in and it calls for one, two, four <laughs> peppercorns. So fill these ones first. I am also going to add like I do for all my pickled products, quarter teaspoon of pickle crisp. Let me put the garlic in the other ones. So this one is full. Now we'll go on to the other jars. I didn't weigh the Brussels sprouts after I took them off the stalk and cleaned them. The recipe from Ball calls for three pounds. It also calls for blanching the Brussels sprouts and I'm not going to do that. Okay. In the ball book, they say these are really good for a Bloody Mary. I need to get the brine going too, but I'll do that once I have these jars filled. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute the sugar in the recipe for pure maple syrup, not pancake syrup. Okay, that one's okay. I thought it had a bad spot. <laughs> and white wine vinegar and balsamic vinegar for the vinegar that's in the recipe. They are all 
the correct acidity. In fact, they're 6% instead of 5%, so they're higher. So they will be safe that way. I realized I hadn't added the lemon juice, so I'm adding one teaspoon to each jar. This will my just brighten the jars flavor on the and steam canner just because I was trying to see if I could fit them all slices and I can. that are in the ball recipe. So I will have eight pints of these. I'm going to make the brine now. I have two cups of water in there. And now I need five cups of vinegar. I'm going to do half white wine vinegar and half balsamic vinegar. You know, if I take this little plug thing off, it'll be easier. So, and actually, I'm going to put the rest. Why well, this would be the other half. So that's two and a half. So we use that whole bottle. And now two and a half. So that's five cups. If I don't have enough brine, I'll have to add some cider vinegar to this. And I'm going to do three quarters of a cup of maple syrup. And make sure it's real maple syrup. You don't want to use pancake syrup. So I'm going to heat this up and get my jars over here so I can fill them. And turn my steam canner on low. I already have the water in it. And I don't have to melt sugar because it's already melted in liquid form. So I am saving some time there. I did just add more maple syrup. It was pretty tangy, which it's supposed to be, but I wanted a little bit more of the maple flavor to come through. So I added a cup and a half of maple syrup. I forgot one ingredient for the brine, a third a cup of canning salt or kosher salt. So I'm going to add that and this has to dissolve. The brine is ready. Everything is dissolved in it. It is all blended. Um, we have the jars ready and we go up to half half an inch headspace. So I have my debubbler because I'm going to have to debubble everything and as I've said before everything is marked on here for the headspace so this middle one is the headspace so we want the liquid to come up to there. Just, this one could have a few more in it but the it'll be fine because of the brine. We'll come up to the proper headspace. These will have to sit on the. Um, I'm gonna get my funnel out because I'm messy. These have to sit on the shelf for a while for the flavor to infuse entirely. Like any pickle, if you use them sooner than that for roasting, they would probably be fine. Ooh, that's pretty. <laughs> Need some more to get to the half inch. Now debubble. Now we clean the edge of the. Put our flat on. 
our ring to finger tight and set the first one on the steam canner. These process for 10 minutes and with a steam canner then you leave the lid on for five more minutes. It's part of the safe standard for a steam canner. Deep bubble and you want to make sure you debubble these because there's lots of pockets for air to get trapped. So I'm going to continue with the other six, get them all filled, and then I'll put the lid on my steam canner. Whoops, that one I think I got too much. Let's deep bubble and see if it makes a difference before I take out some. Well, it ended up fine. <laughs> By the time they got rearranged and debubbled. Ended up with brine left over. I could have done another like half pint if I had had the Brussels sprouts. Can I think of anything else? <laughs> so I am going to put the lid on the steam canner. And just to show you, I need to have the steam come up to this black line where it was my test mark. And then once it reaches there, then I set the timer for 10 minutes. And the timer goes off, I'm going to reset it for five minutes and that after five minutes I can take this off. You can water bath these in a regular water bath and it's for 10 minutes and you take your lid off and then you remove them. We are up to the correct temperature. I'm going to set the timer for 10 minutes. Here they are. After the five minutes and the lid off, I'm going to put them over on the mat and let them sit for until tomorrow and then I can wash them and take the rings off. There was some pinging right away. Here are the eight pints. Trying to get it so the sun doesn't shine on them. It's a beautiful day here today. It's going up into the low 70s. Unusual in Michigan, but these look great. I am excited to have them on my pantry shelf. Whether I eat them out of the jar or decide to roast them on a pan, add them to a charcuterie tray, I just think they're gonna be a lot of fun. Of course, my husband does not agree. He is not a fan of Brussels sprouts. And he said if he was starving, he might eat one a day. <laughs> not much encouragement from him, but the rest of us like them. So here they are, maple balsamic pickled Brussels sprouts. Thank you so much for stopping in today. I really appreciate everyone and if you like this video if you push the like button and if you want to see more videos on canning and baking and vintage recipes push the subscribe button I have new content coming every week thank you so much and see you next time at Pike Creek Farm <laughs>